According to Norse mythology, the fate of the cosmos hung in the balance as the most powerful deities clashed with fearsome beasts and giants, unleashing a cataclysmic series of events that changed the world forever. And this cataclysmic series of events is called Ragnarok. It was the final battle between the gods and the monsters, which ended one era and began the other. Ragnarok is not just a tale of destruction and rebirth, but a story of bravery, sacrifice, and the struggle to maintain order in the face of chaos. This catastrophic event marks the end of the world, where most of the gods and their enemies meet their demise, but making way for a new world order to be born. Today, we will uncover the myth's roots, study epic battles and terrible losses, and discover the deeper meanings underlying Ragnarok's events, themes, and characters. In the Norse mythical universe, Ragnarok is the ultimate event that marks the end of time as we know it. It's a chain of epic happenings, featuring a colossal battle that foretells the demise of mighty gods like Odin, Thor, Tyr, Freya, Himdal, and Loki. Along with these celestial deaths, the world also suffers from catastrophic natural disasters and a devastating deluge that engulfs the planet in water. What did you think? Did it end there? No, it did not. So, what happened next? After this intense apocalypse, the world is reborn, purified, and enriched with fertility. The surviving and returning gods reunite, and just two human survivors repopulate the planet. This legendary event holds an important place in North mythology and has captivated the attention of scholars for years. The epic saga of Ragnarok is shrouded in mystery and intrigue, with its origins dating back to the 10th to 11th centuries, when rune stones bearing clues about the event began to appear in England, Sweden, and the Isle of Man. While the Poetic Edda, a collection of ancient Norse poems, offered further insight into the mythological tale, it wasn't until the 13th century CE that the story of Ragnarok was recorded in writing through the Prose Edda by the renowned Icelandic mythographer Snorri Stolson. Let's elaborate more to understand it deeply. The primary sources of Ragnarok's story are the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, written in the 13th century. The latter was written by Snorri Sturluson, and it's in these texts that the term Ragnaroker is coined, meaning the Twilight of the Gods. This expression became popularized in the 19th century by the legendary composer Richard Wagner, who titled the last opera of his During des Nibelungen series, Götterdämmerung, which means Twilight of the Gods in German. Before Christianity took hold in the region around 1000 CE, Norse myths, legends, and histories were passed down through oral tradition, with runes being used for memorial stones and brief messages, rather than for longer works. As a result, all existing Norse mythology was recorded through a Christian lens, adding an extra layer of complexity to this enthralling tale. John Lindau, a scholar of Norse mythology, said that almost all of the written records of Scandinavian mythology were produced by Christians. Monks, who were often literate in both Latin and Icelandic, were responsible for writing many of these texts. Some laypersons of higher status may also have been literate in Icelandic. However, regardless of the language used, all writing about Norse mythology was influenced by the introduction of Christianity and the technology of manuscript writing that came with it. According to legend, the end of the world will be signaled by a series of cataclysmic events that will shake the foundations of reality itself. First, there will be a time of great strife that will last for three long winters. During this time, the social fabric of society will crumble. Brothers will turn against brothers, fathers against sons, and vows will no longer be kept. Chaos and depravity will reign, and the world will seem to be descending into madness. Next, the world will be plunged into an eternal winter, known as the Fumble Winter, in which snow will fly in all directions, and frost and blizzards will be relentless. The sun and the moon will be devoured by wolves, and the stars will disappear from the sky. The very foundations of the earth will be shaken, and the monsters of North mythology, such as the wolf Fenrir and his father Loki, will be unleashed from their bonds. Fenrir will rage across the land, his eyes and nostrils burning with fire, and his gaping jaws scraping the earth and the heavens. Meanwhile, the serpent Jamungan 
will rise from the depths of the ocean in a furious rage, poisoning everything in its path. Amid this chaos, Nalfgar, the gruesome boat made of dead men's nails, will be unleashed from its moorings, carrying an army of frost giants and their captain, Hurum. The sky will open, and from it will start his blazing sword leads the fire giants, setting everything in their path ablaze. The final event will be the collapse of the Rainbow Bridge, Bifrost, as the fire giants ride over it, destroying everything in their path. As the forces of evil, led by the infamous trickster Loki and his army of souls who once resided in Hell, gather on the enormous field of Vigrin, Hamdal, the watchman of the gods, sounds the alarm with a mighty blast from his Glanhorn. The gods quickly assemble in a parliament, and Odin, their king, seeks the wise counsel of Mimur at the mystical well. As the world tree Yggdrasil groans and shakes, all creatures tremble with fear. The Asser gods prepare for battle, donning their battle dresses, with Odin leading the way. Accompany him are the Inhar, the souls of fallen heroes, and Thor, his son, by his side. The ensuing battles are epic, with Odin facing off against the monstrous wolf Fenrir, while Thor battles his arch nemesis Jormagon. Meanwhile, Frey fights the fiery giant Surt and meets his untimely end due to the lack of his magic sword. The hellhound Garm and the god Tyr engage in a fierce battle, resulting in their mutual destruction. As Thor emerges victorious over the serpent, he tragically succumbs to its venom after taking only nine steps away from its lifeless body. As the mighty wolf Fenrir swallows Odin whole, chaos ensues. But fear not, Odin's son Vidar comes forward to avenge his father. With one swift move, he tears apart Fenrir's mouth, ending the wolf's reign of terror once and for all. Meanwhile, Loki, the god of mischief, engages in a fierce battle with Hemdal. Both of them meet their demise, but their sacrifice is not in vain. Surt, the fire giant, unleashes a blaze that engulfs the entire world, bringing an end to all life, gods and humans alike. But from the ashes of destruction, a new earth emerges, green and fertile. Crops grow without being sown, and Eidolval, the meadow in Asgard, is spared from the flames. The son, Alfredol, gives birth to a daughter before being swallowed by Fenrir and this maiden will ride the skies in her mother's place. A few gods survive the apocalypse, including Odin's sons, Vidar and Vali, Thor's sons, Modi and Magni, and Baldr and his brother, Hod, who rise from hell and dwell in Odin's former hall. They come together to discuss their mysteries and recount the events that led to the end of the world. And in the grass of Eidolval, they find the gold pieces that the Asser used in playing droughts. From this, a new world will be born, one that is better and more peaceful than the old. As the fires of Surt burn the old world away, new heavens and halls are said to be created to house the souls of the dead. Andlan and Vidblain, located south of and above Asgard, offer protection during the Cataclysm. Gimli, Brimmer, Sindri, and Nostrad are other halls where the good, virtuous, and wicked are separated. But what happens to those who have committed unforgivable sins? The worst fate awaits them in Hemdelgare, where the serpent Nighog torments their bodies for eternity. As the world is reborn, Baldur leads a new pantheon of gods and their surviving humans worship. They build a new world on the ashes of the old one and begin a new era. So, this we get to know from the history of Norse mythology. But there is more. In Norse mythology, no specific time or date for Ragnarok to happen was mentioned. It was all about the signs that we talked about earlier in this video. So, some people believe that Ragnarok already happened in 2014, as there were some similar incidents described in Norse mythology. On the contrary, some people believe that Ragnarok will happen in the future. But no one has enough proof to prove one of these theories strongly. So, that ends today's video. We hope you enjoyed the video. But what do you think about these last two theories? Let us know in the comments below.